I've heard it all in my career. All the bullshit excuses and the lies people tell themselves. They say things like, I'll start Monday. It's not my fault. It's not fair. I'm too damn tired. Or my personal favorite, I don't have enough time. Let's have a real talk. You know what kind of people do and say these things? Losers. They have a loser mentality through and through. And until they recognize that the problem is them, they'll never improve. Until they develop a winner's mentality, they'll never get what they truly want. What's a winner's mentality, you ask? It means being focused on yourself and not other people. It means having desire. It means wanting it. Willingness to work for it. You simply have to give it everything you have to get it. You need to shut down all negativity and frankly, not give a shit what others say and think. You want to know what the 10 most dangerous words in the English language are? What will other people say? And what will other people think? You're the only person who needs to be okay with how you live your life. You could be hated by everyone. And if you're okay with your actions and behavior, you'll be content. At the same time, you could be loved and adored by every damn person on the planet. But if you're not okay with how you've lived your life, you'll go to bed with emptiness. The losers we discussed earlier, there'll never be a shortage of them. People who throw hate your way because of how you live your life. And there'll never be a shortage of people who want to see you fail. So the key is to just do you. Do what makes you happy and do what you think is right. At the end of the day, if you and you alone can look yourself in the mirror and be content with the choices you made, then that's all that matters. Believe in everything that you are and understand that within you there's something greater than any obstacle you'll ever face. Have faith in your abilities, work hard, never give up, and there's nothing you can't accomplish. With the right amount of confidence, anything is possible. No matter what you set out to do, your first word should always be, I believe in me. The most important person to believe in is always yourself. You will fail your way to greatness. Most people allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. When you're willing to fail again and again and again, when you make up your mind to become unstoppable, when you make up your mind to become a no matter what person, then that will then give birth to a part of yourself that you don't know right now. Imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents given to you by life and that you, for whatever reason, you never went after that dream. You never acted on those ideas. You never use those talents. You never use those gifts. And there they are standing around your bed looking at you with large angry eyes saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. See, most people stop short of their dreams and park and get off the highway of life because of the rejections of life. You will always be rejected. It's no big deal. Jack Canfield said rejection is a myth. It's not like when somebody says no and then they slap you. No, it's just, you know, to me, make no your vitamin. Get excited about the no. Why? Because every time someone says no, that brings you another step to a yes. You're getting closer. Trust me, you will win if you don't quit. You will win if you don't quit. Even a broke clock is right twice a day. As you go through the challenges of life, and you look at it and embrace whatever comes to you. Don't run from it. Step toward it. Don't try and duck it like most people do. See, most people want it easy. See, if you easy come, easy what? Easy go. See, but when you go at what you're going to deal with and you deal with the difficulties of it, when you handle those hard things close at hand, making those hard decisions right now that you don't want to make, learning those things that you don't like to do. But you know that in order for you to get where you want to go, this is one of the hoops that you have to flip through. 
And I'm saying to you, whatever you got to do, do it, because if you don't, life is going to whoop you until you surrender. You have something that you brought to the universe and that if you decide that my life deserves my developing this what I do well and becoming the best at it and mastering myself and seeing what I have within me if you decide to drop your buckets where you are and develop your gifts I grant you you'll never ever be without I grant you that your gifts will take you places that will literally amaze you. I grant you that if you begin to work to develop your gifts, you'll develop a strong sense of happiness. You'll get a larger vision of yourself because part of beginning to get a larger vision of yourself, all of us need some area of our lives where we can have a feeling of competence. That people know when they think about this area, that's something you do. That you eat and sleep that. And that you do that. You do that. I don't belong in this room. I remember the videos had already been out. My numbers were great. And I would come in rooms and go, or, or like that room, like I go to a high school, like boom. I go to a youth detention center, boom. I go to a prison, boom. I come to corporate and go, I don't know if I belong in here. Everybody in the room don't look like me. They don't come from where I come from. I don't know if I belong here and I'll never, for, I'll never forget. I had a conversation with Les Brown. Les Brown had called me to Orlando. We sat in the hotel and I left and I started talking to Les and I started naming like, yo, you Les Brown, this person, number one in the world. He said, don't you ever say that again. I said, don't say what? He said, you the best in the world right now. I said, what? He said, you're the best in the world right now. There's nobody as good as you in the world. You're the best right now. The only reason you're not the best right now is because you don't believe you're the best now. And when you walk out this room, I want you to go in the mirror and tell yourself, I'm the best right now. He said, before you even become number one, start to proclaim it and say it long before it happened. Say, I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. And when I was number 20, I started saying, I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. And I went to the computer, and the world said exactly what I said, that Eric Thomas is number one in the world. I spoke it, the world heard it, and it activated. Your problem is that you don't believe you belong here. Your problem is that you don't think you should be sitting down here. So listen to me, there are those of you saying, I wanna be a millionaire, I wanna be the best at this company, right? But your value system says you believe in sleep more than you believe in grinding. That you're spending more money than you're making. Why? Because you're a consumer, but you're, you're reading all the books and you're saying everything the books are saying. But those books are not in alignment with your value. And if you're going to go to the next level, your values are going to have to change. When I believed that my voice was needed in this world, when I believed that I needed to be on the stage, not for myself, but to speak to a group of people who come from where I come from, a working class who don't know what it's like to make millions and millions of dollars, who don't understand what wealth looks like, that I needed to come in the room with a single parent mother, with a father not in my life, being homeless in a high school dropout. Only somebody who comes from where you come from can tell you you belong. And I had to get my butt on stage because there's some folks that Les Brown can't reach. There's some folks that Tony Robbins can't reach. There's some folks that only I can reach. And so I need to be on the stage with them doing what I was called to do. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit doing the process. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. Champions keep going when they don't have anything left in their tank. When you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. Some of y'all been worshiped since you was in high school, so you don't really know how to grind. <laughs> like you talk grind, like I, I love it. Like I go into the weight room and y'all playing like Pac. Y'all playing Biggie, like y'all all in it. Like you like, you like Pac, but you don't have the spirit of Pac. 
You like love pop. You like listening to pop. You like listening to Biggie. You like to talk about the grind, but you don't really know what the grind's like. I know what the grind is like. I was homeless. I ain't out of trash can. Now, go on, go on the internet right now. I'm one of the number one speakers in the world. I started from the bottom. Like you like listening to it and see. Started from the bottom. Now, your what's your bottom? What is your bottom when you've been worshipped since middle school? You've been tall your whole life, big your whole life. They worship you so much now that you think it's about you. You don't even know what the grind look like. I'm from Detroit, homeless. Mama got pregnant with me at 17 years old, high school dropout. Took me 12 years to get a four-year degree. I'm coming now. It's in view. You finally made it to the big leagues and now you want to chill? Now you got the big head? Now you can't grind? You here now. You here now, you finally made it. And this is where you, you break up? This is where you start chilling? This is where you get comfortable? You made it now. You made it now. You in the big leagues now. They watching you now. This is where you make it permanent. Yeah, I saw it, I saw it. Perfect, perfect, nope. Practice don't make perfect. Practice make permanent. This permanent, y'all, this is permanent. You can go wherever you wanna go from here. It does not take talent. You don't have to be talented, right? You don't have to be gifted. You don't have to be the quickest, the strongest. You don't have to be the most intelligent to get to where I am. That's what you gotta do. You just gotta grind though. You're grind, you gotta outgrind. So many of you heard me say this. Your father, listen to me, might own a company. Your mama might be a millionaire. You might come from privilege. Your daddy might hook you up with a car. He might know people. He might be able to get you a job, but you will not outwork me and what you have to decide in your position in the NCAA you have to make a decision that nobody in this league in your position will outwork you I will walk away with stuff I never heard before books I've never read before audios that I've never seen before going to conferences that I've never gone hanging out with people that I never hung out with before this is nothing guys this is just a dessert there are those of you with phones, and every new phone that comes out, you get it. Every upgrade, you get it. Every piece of software, you get it. You are upgrading your technology, and you've not upgraded yourself. Listen to me closely. When you get to the point where enough is enough, when you get to the point where it hurt real bad, when you get to the point you can't take it no more, when you get to that point, the doors start opening. Opportunities start happening. Listen to me very closely. It's our dream. Nobody's going to see it like you do it. It's your dream. Nobody's going to feel it like you feel it. It's your dream. Nobody's going to be as dedicated to it as you are. It's your dream and they don't have to understand and they don't have to like it and they don't have to do it. It doesn't make a difference. It's your dream and you, my friend, have been given the task to make it happen and you can't let anything stop you from doing what you were called to do. Not many people have discipline, but the great ones do. Not many people work on themselves every day, but the great ones do. Not many people are willing to sacrifice for years to live a better life in the future, but the great ones are. There's really something to this. Learning from those who achieve not only achieve financial results, but are living a rich life. Not rich in terms of money, but in all areas. Health, happiness, fun, a quality of life most don't enjoy. You see, self-discipline is not usually fun in the moment, but that self-discipline leads to a higher quality life later. It always does. If you're disciplined to do the work consistently over time, you will see the rewards. If you're disciplined consistently to eat healthy foods over time, you will see the results in your physical shape and the energy from greater health. Discipline works always. The problem is most people aren't willing to suffer now for greater later. Most people choose easy now and pain later. Those are really the only options. Discipline now. 
Greater later. Easy now, suffer later. What do you choose? Most people finish school and pack up the books. This is a big mistake. Life doesn't end after school, and nor should your education, especially self-education, because almost everything you are interested in is not taught in school. You have to teach yourself. You have to find what you love and build something around that. School will never teach you the most important subjects. Mental health. How to build mental strength. How to develop emotional strength and resilience. How to become self-sufficient and build an income for yourself so you can enjoy the freedom that comes with that. So you don't have to rely on others to live the life you want to live. Discipline now, greater later. Easy now, suffer later. What do you choose? to ask yourself what you want from life and what are you willing to sacrifice to get it? Are you willing to give up 10 years to live 50 years in comfort? Are you willing to sacrifice for one year to build stronger habits that will last a lifetime? What's it gonna be? You choose. What was it about your dad that impacted you so much that you still carry today? For me, at least, was uh, what level of wisdom did he glean in his life and then successfully communicate to me, either by example or by just explicit statement. For example, in high school, he was in gym class and they were lining up and they were about to enter the next athletic unit and it was track and field. And the gym instructor pointed to my father online and said, Cyril Tyson, everyone look at him. He does not have the body type that would excel in track. And they used him as an example. And he says, what? No one is gonna tell me what I can't do in my life. And he used that as a reason to start running and he started track in that moment. He decided that his, one of his next tasks in life would be to take up running and excel at it. Within a few years of that, he became world class. At one time, had the fifth fastest time in the world. Oh. In the middle distance, they don't run this anymore, 600 yard run. In 1948, the Olympics was not yet ready to come back to us because we're still reeling, roiling from the Second World War. Instead, they, it was still an Olympics. It was called the GI Olympics, and it was held in Hitler's stadium. So he competed in Hitler's stadium uh, in the late 1940s, and just one of the great memories of his life. But the reason I'm saying all of that is they were competing against the New York Athletic Club. In the day, once you graduated college, you needed some sanctioning body to compete with. So there were athletic clubs. The New York Athletic Club at the time accepted only white Protestants. So there was another club called the Pioneer Club, which took everybody who was not accepted to the New York Athletic Club, which was basically blacks and Jews, is really what that came down to. And his best friend, Johnny Johnson, okay, was coming around the back stretch, might have been the quarter mile, coming on the final straightaway. And a runner from the New York Athletic Club is a few paces behind him. And Johnny Johnson overhears that runner's coach say, catch that And he overheard this. And so what did he say to himself? He said, this is one he ain't going to catch. <laughs> and that extended his, his, his lead to the finish line. And he tells this story not with any bitter tone. So he never had that kind of tone when he shared those stories with us. It was, here's an occasion to parlay what today might be called a microaggression into a reason to excel 
even more than you had expected of your own abilities and talents. And so I have taken that lesson with me. I want you to tell us what those lowest moments of childhood felt like in one word. Temporary. Absolutely temporary. There was just no way I was gonna let that person beat me again. And there was just no way I was gonna stay comfortable in this negative place. Just a matter of time. Some things are just destiny, you know? Look, everybody goes through a moment in their life where everything you thought up to that second vanishes and you realize that there's an opportunity to change the story that you've written in your head for the last two, three decades. And I think it's universal. I think there are very few people who don't get to a point at year 20, 30, 35 that don't start debating, wait a minute, is this what I want? Is this where I'm going? Is this how it's playing out? And you know, to me, that is one of the most important moments in one's life. You know, many people look at it as a moment to start to get upset and say, wait a minute, this is not what I signed up for. And others, regardless of what's happened, use it as an opportunity to write the next chapter. It's important for me to tell the truth and I was so insular. You know, I feel like I was so positive about how it was gonna turn out that it was hard for me to internalize it. I really honestly, the toughest part for me growing up actually now that I think about it was losing in anything. I used to cry a lot as a kid. Like if I lost in pool or little league or a tennis match or chess or Nintendo, that was really the truth. Like when I wasn't in control, and something I cared deeply about happened, or when I was in control, like when I played and I lost. Having to calibrate the fact that somebody was better at something than me was something that took me a very long time because I was so <laughs> blindly positive and optimistic that I was gonna win. So taking back to that moment and deciding to, to roll the dice and take a chance and to take a risk and chase something I was so alive. I was just so ready. And I knew it. I knew it. In that moment, I knew that I was exactly where I needed to be. That all the circumstances up to that point led me to this place where I was ready to flourish. I felt so at home. Until this room redefines success into waking up in the morning and being happy versus money, we will be in a bad place. Think about two core things in my opinion. One, you have to, at all costs, not beat your own self up with yourself. At all costs. It's huge. Yeah. You need to really be your own biggest fan instead of critiquing everything. Number two, moments in time. You've got to wrap your head around how young you actually are. You have to wrap your head around how early in the process this is and how this is just a very small moment in time. 400 trillion to one. I just want everybody to hear this. This is the reason I'm happy 24-7, 365 for the rest of my life. 400 trillion to one. The odds of becoming a human being. You might not like the human being situation you ended up in, but let me tell you this. Your mom might have grabbed another glass of wine and you never would have been. <laughs> I mean, 400 trillion to one. I've never seen anything that scares me as much as sitting with somebody in their 80s or 90s who spends all their time talking to me and not about not what they did, but what they wish they did. And in that, there's something that I think can really work here and here's what I mean by that. I believe that if everybody in this room had a better relationship with understanding time, they could be much happier. I feel like people are grossly impatient. 
I don't think that people that are 55 years old realize they have 20 more years of executing in a world where they grew up as kids and 55 seems so old and people were dying at a different age and retiring at a different age. I think if you actually saw regret up close and personal for one day, that a lot of the things that you're not doing, that it could scare you into doing it. I live a life already where people email me on a tactical level the regret that they wish they listened to me around this, that, or the other thing three or four or five years ago. Where do I begin? In teaching you the lessons of life, all I can say to you, you have what it takes to make it happen. I want you to stop limiting your beliefs. Limiting your beliefs is stunning your growth. Limiting your beliefs is putting you at a halt for you to get to the next level. They looked at the most successful men and women of the world and they found that they had like seven, eight things in common. And one of the things they all had in common was a routine. They are obsessed with their routine. They don't have a gap of wasted time in their routine. You know I realized the reason why I'm so successful and the reason why I don't get in trouble like I used to when I was younger is because when I was younger, man, my schedule had so many gaps in it. I got up the other day like at three o'clock in the morning and I woke up and I was just walking around like, I was like, I'm so tired. I heard the devil say, go back to sleep. I was like, yeah, you're right. I should go back to sleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. I was like, bro, you want something. I just gotta get up at three and get all my work done before y'all get up. I just gotta make all my phone calls while y'all still sleep. I just gotta make all my phone calls while y'all party. In order for you to believe in yourself, in order for you to get to another level in life, you need to understand that winners win and losers lose. Winners don't make excuses on why they can't get something accomplished, but losers do. Winners stay consistent. Winners are the ones for the change in this world. How oh, do you think you're too smart? You're strong enough! How do you think you're too strong? See, to be strong, I need you to be weak. I, I need you to be vulnerable and say, you know what, I can't do it by myself. I don't need this false humility. I need you to be real because the next time you get an opportunity, you gotta be ready because we're turning dreams into reality. Let's make it happen right now, me and you. Let's make it happen right now, me and you, because you're smart enough. Losers, they have a limited belief system in their self of making excuses, procrastinating, being lazy. And we're going to make it happen, my man. Hey, sister, we're going to make it happen, but you got to get out your comfort zone. You got to do something you've never done before to get something you never had. We got to make it happen, and you got to take advantage of it. You got to maximize the moment to make it happen. So I'm talking to somebody right now because there's somebody that's believing in you and that's cheering you on and that's supporting you and they're rooting for you, but you're not doing what you need to do in order for you to maximize your potential. So right now you're being a loser. And what I need for you to do and what I need for you to become and who I need you to be is I need you to be a winner. Why? Because winners win and losers lose. So I need you to stop making excuses and I need you to move forward and I need you to change and I need you to do the things that you need to do in order for you to win because winners win. Listen to me very closely. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because the economy. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because of racism. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because it ain't the season. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because they don't love you. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because the opportunity ain't there. The truth of the matter is that you ain't there because you ain't there. Some of you, you know what you want. You know what you want but you are not personally willing to do the work it takes to get it. What you're trying to do is do what you've done on this level and get the next level. You're trying to do exactly what you're doing on this level. You're like, I'm getting up every day. I'm putting in two and a half. I'm putting in three and I'm not getting the opportunity. The opportunity might require three and a half. I'm lifting weights. I'm eating right and I'm not getting the opportunity. It might require getting up and working out three and a half. It might require you saying no to your friends. It might require you changing your diet. It might require you moving to another city. Whatever it takes, you gotta be willing to do it and you keep saying you're not there because of something else because it's easier to blame somebody else. Because now you don't gotta do no work when you blame somebody else. Guess who gotta do the work? They gotta do the work. But guess who got the power? They got the power. 
So what I'm telling you to do, since you hate being told what to do, you're gonna have to fix yourself since you don't like nobody else telling you what to do. If you could fix procrastination, what would your life be like? You, you understand what I'm saying? People like E.T., I wanna do what you do. No you don't, I'm my own boss. When I worked at Michigan State, I had to be to work at nine o'clock. When I work for myself, I get up at three. When I worked at Michigan State, I get to leave at five. When you work for yourself, you don't have no time when you get off. You don't get off, you stop when the work is done. If you work for yourself, you'd be asleep all day. You'd be like, oh, I work for myself, I'm good, I ain't even getting up today. You don't say I'm just taking a day off. I'm just being real. There are those of you who work for yourself, you don't even have a plan, you don't even have like a, a vacation package for yourself. You just get to get off whenever you want to. What kind of job is that? You can just take off when you want to? That ain't no real job. You ain't got no insurance. You ain't paying yourself. You ain't, Oh, but when you had a job, you could get there for them when they wanted you to get there. Oh, you had to tell them when you was gonna be sick, when you want, but for yourself, you ain't gotta do nothing? That's why you can't blow up. You ain't got enough discipline to discipline you. I came today because I care about you. I came today because I love you. You gotta make it happen, and it is who you are. It has got to be your focus every day. You got to focus on it. I made it to the NBA because I couldn't get it out of my mind. I couldn't get it out of my face. I worked on it every day, all day. I became a motivational speaker. I'm no different than you. I'm not smarter than you. But let me tell you one thing I understand. I had to make it happen and so can you. Until you become accountable, it's hard for you to move. I need you to own it right now. Because when you raise your hands in victory, I want you to own that too. But right now, we gotta make this move. What happened to you just now? I don't wanna hear about your challenges. We all got them. I don't wanna hear about your limitations. What? We all got them. I don't wanna hear about your haters. What? We all got them. In fact, if you don't have haters, your vision is too small. If you don't have haters, you ain't been thinking big enough. Haters are a part of the landscape to make it happen. So can I ask you a question? What are you working on right now? But if you're gonna make it happen, we gotta build it from scratch. All you gotta do is follow the recipe to success. The blueprint has already been set. Life is simple if simple principles are applied. I'm going to say that one more time. Life is simple if simple principles are applied. And I'm going to break it down even further in just a moment. There's no shortcut to your success. There is absolutely no shortcut to success. An inheritance gained quickly will not be blessed in the end. Ain't no fast money. Ain't no fast success. If it's fast, don't want it. If it's quick, run away. Success is like a slow drip. You already know what it takes to be successful. I just need you to believe. I just need you to buy in. I just need you to execute. You learned in the first grade what it took to be successful. You learned in the fifth grade what it took to be successful. You heard it over and over in high school what it took to be successful. The key right now, you need to believe it.